Um, so I study, my lab studies the production and perception of vocal communication signals in songbirds, which is really just a fancy way of saying that we study, let's see, do I have a pointer? We study how birds sing and we study how birds listen. So male songbirds learn their song early in development. They learn it from a tutor. And then they refine or practice that song over the course of weeks to months until they produce a song that's reasonably stable and adult-like. It's a, it's a process that's quite similar to the way that humans learn speech. But it's a pretty labor-intensive process as well. And so it raises the question of why in the world do birds sing in the first place? And it turns out that birds sing for the same reasons that crickets chirp, frogs croak, Birds have these elaborate displays of plumage. Fish have elaborate displays of scales. And men wear cologne. <laughs> <laughs> they all do it in order to impress girls. And, uh, and that's what my lab studies. So we study both how the birds produce these songs, and then what I'm going to focus on today, we study what girls think of the songs that those males are producing. So the two main questions that we focus on are, what do females think of different songs? And then how is that preference for particular songs or particular song attributes encoded in the brain? So on a behavioral level, we, we do these tests with females where we ask them to respond to different kinds of songs. We either play them songs of different males or songs that were produced in different social contexts. We manipulate the songs a little bit for particular parameters that we think that females might care about. And then we play those songs to females and we ask them to respond. And in this situation, the female can just move closer to a speaker that's playing something that she finds attractive. We can also ask the female to peck at a key or to hop on a perch or to do a more natural behavior where she actually just calls out in response to a song that she likes. And then once we have a sense of what females think of different songs and how different females compare in their responses to those songs, we can go into the brain and ask, how is that preference for particular songs encoded? So this is just a cartoon of a bird brain. And uh, we, look at <laughs> we look at the brain in a couple different ways. One is to look at the expression of particular proteins or genes. And um, so in the example shown here, um, uh, the picture on the far right is the response of the brain to the, part of the brain to an unfamiliar song, and the other two are response, responses to a different kinds of familiar songs. And you can see there's more expression to the unfamiliar song in this case. Um, and so the advantage of protein or gene expression studies is we can look at the whole brain at once. We can look at all different parts of the brain and see how, how those areas compare. But the problem is that it's a little bit post hoc. We look at the behavior, and then sometime later, we look at the brain. And so in order to look at those two things simultaneously, um, in real time, we use electrophysiology. So we can actually look at the activity of single cells while the bird is listening to a song or performing a behavior, and we can see how those two relate. So there, the top trace is, um, is the song that the bird is listening to. And each of these lines coming down is an action potential or a spike in a particular part of the brain. And you can see, or maybe you can see, that the activity sort of changes in response to the song. So when we get enough of those, we can actually have a sense of how particular areas are responding to sound. We can take this a step farther. So we know as, as people that um, some of our preferences are innate or genetic. But a lot of them are shaped by our social or cultural experiences. And uh, the same is true for songbirds. And so we can actually manipulate the experiences of songbirds, either while they're juveniles or while they're adults, by letting them interact with different kinds of birds or in different social situations. And then we can see how that affects both brain and behavior. Thanks.